And the article was citing this study that showed very little difference oh, yeah. between men that and damn women. Study. Yeah. Oh, God. It's a pathetic study. Yeah. Well, I, I sent it to you because I was like, this, this is not right. Well, the thing is, like most things, it's complicated. Yes. You know, so are men and women more similar or more different? Well, it depends on how you define the terms first. But they're more similar. Well, why? Well, they're the same species. So we could start with that. Like, but the question is, what are the differences and how do they manifest themselves and are those manifestations important? So here's an example. If you took uh, a random woman out of the population and a random man and you had to bet on who was more temperamentally aggressive, if you bet on the man, you'd be right 60% of the time. But you'd be wrong 40% of the time. And that, that's not a walloping difference, right? 60-40. It's not 90-10. Like, so there's, quite, there's a lot of overlap between men and women in terms of their levels of aggression. And you think, well, they're more the same. Yeah, except. So then let's say, no, no, let's play a slightly different game. Let's pick the one in a hundred most aggressive person from the random population. Well, they're all men. And that's why all the people in prison are men. So even though, on average, most, men and women, most, well, yeah, right. it's 90, yeah. 90, 90 to ninety-five right. percent, right? So, and often if the women are in prison, it's because they got tangled up with a really bad guy, you know. So, so one of the problems is is that differences at the extreme are where the differences really start to manifest themselves, and so you can have a small difference at the level of the average, but out at the extremes, it starts to make a massive difference. So let's say to be a Google engineer, which is hard, right? Because you not only have to be an engineer, but you have to be a very good engineer. Say, well, you have to be interested in things rather than people. That's a, that's a huge difference in interest. Like men are more interested in things, generally speaking, and women are more interested in people, generally speaking. Now, there's still a lot of overlap between them, but that's one of the biggest differences between men and women. It's been demonstrated cross-culturally. It's also a very big difference in the Scandinavian countries. Well, on average, the difference isn't that great, even though it's a relatively large difference. But at the extremes, it's the same thing. Almost all the people are hyper, um, what would you call, hyper-focused on things. They're almost all men. And all the people who are hyper-focused on people are almost all women. And so how does that play out in the world? Well, in the Scandinavian countries, it plays out this way. About 85% of nurses in Scandinavia are female. And about 85 to 90% of engineers are male. It doesn't mean women can't be engineers. It doesn't mean men can't be nurses. It also doesn't have anything to do with intelligence. But it does have to do with interest. And the differences in interest are big. Now at the extremes in particular. So when you read a review like that, the one that was pointed out, the first question is, well, what do you mean by big and little? There's more overlap. There's more overlap between men and women than there is difference on virtually every parameter. Okay, fine. Are the remaining differences significant in how they play out in the world? And the answer to that is overwhelmingly significant because you, you, you select for extremes. So here's another example. Ashkenazi Jews have an average IQ of 115. So in the typical population overall has an average IQ of 100. 15 points is about the difference between the typical college student and the typical high school student. Okay, so it's not a massive difference, but if you go to the extreme, say, well, let's go look at people who only have an IQ of 145, which is kind of where you hit the beginnings of genius level. It's like the Jews are overwhelmingly overrepresented. So s relatively small differences in the average can produce walloping differences at the extremes. And people don't understand that. It's not surprising because it, it actually requires a fairly sophisticated grasp of statistics. But when we're talking about things like differential outcome in the workplace, um, then you have to take a sophisticated statistical approach to it or you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And unfortunately, many of the people who are talking about things like gender differences, they have no idea what they're talking about. They don't know the literature. They don't know there is a literature. They don't understand biology like the the social constructionist types, the women's studies types, the neo-Marxists, they don't give a damn about biology. It's like they inhabit some disembodied universe. So the review was poorly written at best and did not, was, showed a, a, a very poor grasp of the relationship between group differences and economic and practical outcomes. It's not just that. It's deceptive. And there's, there's a need in some way on that side... Uh, this side of the debate, the anti-Jordan 